Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a nice warm round of applause for Luca! Thank you. Uh, I'm Luca Namon, and today I will be going to uh, speak about blockchain and crypto money. So I will take a brief history of uh, the previous 200 years and how the humankind uses money. So first, we start with using gold to uh, exchange goods and services around the world. But then the government actually invented the bills and pieces to um, make more convenient these kind of exchanges. Then the banking system uh, created the credit card and the virtual money to make people, uh, to make the exchange of goods and services even more convenient because now people do not carry deals and pieces anymore. If, like, for example, in Korea, I saw a lot of people only using the credit card and having no uh, bills at all in the world. The next step actually is crypto <coughs> money. So that's why I will speak to you about this today. Um, from this uh, little shen, I will uh, talk to you about how the current banking system works nowadays. So uh, if this guy wants to buy something on the grocery store, or either take money from the ATM machine, or uh, do um, a transfer of money from one country to another, or even from a bank to another, he will have to bypass the, the banking system. And the bank will actually store all of the data in the data center of the, of the bank. So this is actually um, what we call a centralized system. And this system has a lot of downsides. Like for example, you will pay a lot of fees if you want to put money from one country to another, or even if you want to take some cash from the ATM machine. Uh, you will have no privacy because the bank actually own all of your data in the data center and you have no idea what they're doing with. And uh, sometimes it will take like a lot of time to actually put money, especially from the for the the transfer money from one country to another. It will take <coughs> up to ten days. Sometimes and you don't even have the idea when the money will actually go into the other um, bank account. So a brief history about the blockchain. Um, Satoshi Nakamoto. Nakamoto uh, released the um, uh, book after the subprime crisis in 2008, who he told us how how the freedom can be acquired uh, in by using the blockchain system and especially the Bitcoin system. So in 2009, he actually released a software called the Bitcoin, where a user uh, were allowed to download it and uh, make exchange between humans in Bitcoin. Uh, I will talk about the blockchain principles. I uh, hope you won't uh, sleep on it. So the blockchain actually is um, basically a block chain, like a chain of blocks. This is not very complicated. And then we have the peer-to-peer -peer system. This is actually like the internet. You have a lot of computers all around the world who are running the blockchain system. So um, I just told like we have a chain of blocks. So what inside a block? So inside the block we have an information, so this is a transfer of money from uh, Zozo to Zaza. We have an identifier which makes the block u very unique. And we have the identifier of the previous block, so we can make a chain of blocks. Um, so this is my first block, second block, and this is the block I want to put, the new block I want to put in the blockchain. Um, so it contains the information, the ID, and the previous ID. You can see it's right there. Um, so I want, if I want to give money to uh, Zaza here, I will have to ask the whole peer-to-peer -peer system if my block is valid. So I want to ask them, is my block valid? Can I put it in the blockchain? So if all the computers in the, if all the computer in the peer-to-peer -peer system valid it, my block will go to the, the blockchain and uh, Zaza will have this, this model, yes. Um, so the blockchain is composed of a block of a, a chain of block and a peer-to-peer -peer system, which make it very fast because I can send money to someone er all around the world uh, just instantly, like I send an email. There is no intermediate, so no bank who will have all of your data, and it's very private because, yeah, the bank won't have your data, so you can you can. 
own your own data. Um, no, let's take a step back. Uh, we can use the blockchain to actually help poor people. Because for example, in India, we have 300,000 people who, who don't have access to a banking uh, account. So we can help them to actually uh, put their money on the, uh, on the safe space. At the same time, we can stop the ripoff of the bank because, so for example, if you want to transfer some money from a country to another, sometimes the bank will take you 10% uh, of this money and we can protect our rights because the, the bank won't uh, have part of our uh, private information. Um, I think I'll just skip this one because I am out of time. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.